All right, let me know if you can hear me. And let me see. Uh, all right. All right, let me know when anybody can hear me or see me. All right, uh, am I going out live? Give me one sec. All right, now it looks like we're good. All right, sorry about that uh, little minor hiccup right now. All right. All right, we are good now. All right. All right, uh, sounds like I'm good. Looks like we're good. All right, everything's back on track. All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Uh, welcome to Romero Threads on YouTube, where it's all about embroidery. Um, today, super jam-packed informational session that we're gonna have today. Okay, so we, we got a very important topic that we gotta talk about. All right, so looks like we, uh, People are coming in, in the chat. All right. Uh, say some good mornings to Bevy Jean. Good morning, Janet, from New York, snowing here. All right. Oh, all right. Uh, good morning, Barb from Minnesota, North Central Minnesota, minus 17. All right. That's crazy, right? Uh, I think we might be in the negatives too today, which is kind of crazy because we are uh, in March. All right, all right. Um, bam, bam. All right. Let's see some uh, quick mornings. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Jesse. All right, bam, bam. All right. So we got uh, skinny. All right, and Audrey. Good morning. All right. Let's see, see, bam, bam, bam. Uh, just today, um, we're gonna digitize, and we're gonna have a discussion. All right, so while I'm digitizing, so this is what I'm gonna digitize today. So as you see on the left, we have like a little baby, a uh, little baby uh, lion, okay, little baby Simba. And then we have the very serious lion, right? That has this game face on, okay? So we're gonna digitize this today. Um, we're gonna talk about all the different routes that we could go with, with digitizing. There's no right or wrong answer. It's all an opinion. So it's like um, a lot of it is uh, it's on the art side, right? Whatever your brain is telling you, whatever you think is the correct way to go, that's the way uh, we usually digitize, okay? Um, so while I'm digitizing, I also wanna have a conversation, all right? We'll have a, uh, good, uh, a good conversation about one of the most important feature. It's like a feature slash a skill something that cannot just be bought or obtained, okay? It takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of skills to get this certain feature, all right? And that's the, the feature of being brave, all right? So being brave, I've kind of like categorized it into three, three different categories, all right? So we'll talk about these three categories of being brave, all right? And I'm pretty sure 99% of everybody that's here today in the class, all right? I'm pretty sure 99% of everybody has an embroider machine or, um, or is thinking about getting into embroidery, all right? So just the fact or just the, the, the entry level of, of embroidery, all right? Takes a lot of courage, takes a lot of, uh, uh, it, you have to be brave, right? Just to get into embroidery. So just by being here today, all right, I already know that everybody here, all right, has a, a strong level of courage, right? Just because you're an embroiderer, right? Just being an embroiderer by itself, okay? Takes a lot of courage just to take that first leap, all right? So I already know that I'm talking to uh, courageous people here, right? Because we've all taken that, we've all made that decision or we're thinking about making that decision 
into getting in, into embroidery, right? And as you, everybody knows, right, embroidery is freaking hard, right? It is freaking hard. Like the learning never stops. Just when you think, just when you think you got everything under control, right? That customer just throws a curveball at you, right? Hey, uh, I want it on this type of garment, right? Something that you've never seen, uh, something where there's low quantities of 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 stock. Okay. And, and all of a sudden it takes you out of your comfort zone and you go from being this line on your right hand side to being to being back to a little baby Simba. All right. Like courageous, but at the same time, not a hundred percent confident. All right. So today we're gonna talk about uh we're gonna talk about um being brave, okay, what it takes to be brave. All right. All right, so we got uh more people coming into the chat. All right. Uh Good morning, Demps. Uh, good morning, Marisa. Good morning, uh, Maxine and Alicia. All right. So it looks like we're going to get a packed house today. All right. We got good information right here. All right. Good morning, Crafty Puerto Rican. All right. Uh, let's see. Bebe and Allen. All right. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, good morning. All right. So. While I'm digitizing, we're going to talk about just being courageous. All right. And uh, today's question, today's question of the day. Okay. I, I just want to kind of ask everybody here if you want to share your experience or anything here in the chat. All right. Uh, we'll be glad to hear it. But today's question of the day is, what is that first project? What is that first project that you that you completed that kind of that kind of gave you that boost of confidence? Like, hey, I can do this. OK, because I know for myself, I have that one job where after I completed it, OK, that boost of confidence. Right. I just I, I grabbed that boost of confidence and it kind of took me to that next level. Like, OK, from here, I got it from here. All right. For for me, my first actually it was uh, it was probably my second or third paid job. It was a 3D puff hat. Right. Usually they they advise you. Don't do 3D puff until you're, you know, months in embroidery. All right. It was one of my first jobs that I did was 3D puff hats on a uh, structured hat. OK, uh, very complicated design. All right. Very complicated design. And at that time, right at that time, I didn't know the rules of embroidery. I didn't know the boundaries that we had to kind of stay in with an embroidery. And I just said yes to everything. All right. The customer was like, hey, can you replicate this? And without a hesitation, I was like, hey, I'm going to kind of figure it out as I go. Right. And I said yes to everything and. Ended up being a nightmare, right, ended up being a nightmare because I learned very quick that there are certain boundaries, there are certain rules in embroidery. There are certain things that we can we can't do. And I kind of learned the hard way, but lucky it was somebody that I knew. So it was easy to work with them and be honest with them and say, hey, we can't do this, but we can do this. All right. So if you want to share for the question of the day, what is that one project? OK, what is that one project that you had? OK, that, and, and, and after that first project, it gave you like a boost of energy, like, hey, I got this. All right. I, I can actually be very good at this. All right. All right. So I'll let that. Uh, kind of uh, marinate a little. All right. So we'll probably go if anybody wants to answer that one, we'll, we'll go to it later. All right. So today this is uh, the design that we're going to digitize today. So on the left hand side, we have the little baby symbol and on the right, we have like a badge. Right. And then the line is looking kind of kind of like on alert. All right. Uh, and like I said, right, when you're looking at this uh, design, when you're looking at these designs, there's so many ways. So there's so many routes that you can go. Right. Uh, and of course, just because you don't digitize, let's say you send out your, your let's say you send out your artwork to a digitizer. It's still good practice to learn some of the basics because we'll go over some of the common stuff that happens. All right. Sometimes uh, a digitizer might digitize something. And he might sample it out and come out perfect wherever he's at. And then when you try to do it at your house or at your shop, it doesn't come out right, 
right? And then you start blaming the digitizer or you might blame the machine, right? But sometimes it's just, we'll, we'll talk about the different uh, stuff that happens with, um, with digitizing, all right? It's kind of like, it's like a moving target, okay? It's a moving target. Uh, it's not always what you see is what you get when it's digitizing, all right? So I do want to show you, let me see, let me change to the screen. So, hold on. Um, all right. So this is this is like the drawing here that we have, right? The young Simba. We'll start with the little young Simba, and then by the time you digitize it, all right. By the time you digitize it, this is how it looks right here. All right. So uh, we're gonna. This is like our final piece. This is the piece that we're gonna get to. All right. So as you see, there's little small details. Like if you're a if you're a digitizer, you'll catch on the little minor details that's happening in this um, in this embroidery design. All right. So we're gonna go into the into the different uh, stages of where we could go. All right. So that's this design. All right. So we got this one here. All right. Let me go back to. All right. So just kind of give you like a preview of what we're going to digitize today. All right. Even though it seems like you're looking at the 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 baby line, seems very straightforward, right? But it can be a headache. Okay. There are certain things that can be a headache. For example, if you notice the picture, it has like um, layers, right? You have the back layer, like you have the the fluff, right, of of the of the line. Then you have the ears. You have the face, you have the, the tongue, you have the mouth. That's all on top of each other. And that all plays a role on your whole embroidery. All right. So there, there as a digitizer, you're kind of like running with a lot of stuff in the back of your brains. How do I approach something like that? All right. So we'll start off with that one. All right. But going back to our discussion about being brave in, uh, being brave in embroidery. Let me just start off with level one of being brave, all right? And this is what I was saying that everybody here on today's live, we all have this, the initial brave, cur courageous part of embroidery, and that's that we actually got into embroidery, right? Because there is a, there is a high price ticket to get into embroidery. It's not like we just buy something for uh, less than a grand and you're in, no, like to get into embroidery, we got to invest, right, uh, thousands and thousands of dollars on a machine. And then after you buy your 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 machine, that can be 10 plus thousands, then you're buying accessories, right, stuff that you didn't even think about that you needed, okay? So just by making that decision and saying, yes, I'm going to get into embroidery, all right, we already entered that first stage of being brave. OK, because there's it's like no looking back. Right. Once you get into embroidery, that's it. Right. It's like you committed. Like I, I literally remember. From the day I from the day I got into embroidery on forward. It's like my life has never been the same than before. Like I feel like before embroidery, I had so much time I was doing. I was watching every movie. I was watching every show I was watching. Um, uh, every sports, right? Everything. I had so much time to do everything. And then you fast forward into the embroidery uh, stage. All right. I barely have to. I, I can't even remember the last uh, show that I've seen from beginning to end. All right. So, um, so level one of embroidery that we all share. So we all share this common uh, area of braveness is just getting into embroidery all right all right uh let's see so okay we got a lot of good uh information here so once i take a break we'll go back and read a lot of this stuff all right looks like you guys got some good stuff here all right so let's start with digitizing all right let's start with digitizing let me just fix our screen right here all right let me see if i could pull stuff on this all right cool all right. Uh, anytime, if you have a question, you can put a Q in front of your question. Uh, today, we're, we're going to uh, digitize. So we have this baby lion here. All right. He 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 he's very courageous. All right. 
Um, he thinks he's courageous, right? And he eventually will be uh, very fierce and, uh, and intimidating, right? But right now, he's kind of gaining his experience, right? And that's like a lot of us, right? A lot of us, uh, especially if you're brand new in, in embroidery, all right, you might know a thing or two. But the thing is, uh, every now and then you might get a couple curveballs, all right. But by doing practice, by sampling stuff, and and, and learning how everything works, okay, you kind of it kind of makes life a whole lot easier in mastering embroidery, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's start this. So uh, let's check the size first. So let me go into um, yeah, we got a good. It looks good on the computer right there. So if we measure out, I always like to measure out my designs. I want to say this was a 2.5. Uh, yeah, we're looking at about 2.5 design here. All right, so we look good. Uh, I like 2.5 because it's um, polo shirt friendly. It's hat friendly. Okay, a lot of cool things. Uh, works out with 2.5 inches. Okay, so let me go back to metric. And I'm just going to lock this down. So my hotkey here is K. That way my design is not going to move. And then I dim it just so I could kind of see through it. All right. So it's just dimming. All right. A lot of this stuff, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try to use a lot of stuff that most softwares use. All right. But if you send out this, uh, if you send out your, your, your designs to digitizers, uh, a lot of them uses Wilcom 4.5. So that way, you know. Uh, little little things that they can use to kind of fix stuff. So sometimes you're going back and forth with a digitizer. If you understand the tools that they have, right, you could kind of you could kind of use the same language that they use. All right. So it's still good. It's still good practice to learn uh, the way stuff works out. All right. All right. And then uh, Bevy Jean question. So this is the this called clip art. Yeah, yeah. So this would be called your clip art design, right? Um, I like to practice with a lot of stuff from Canva. All right, I, I use Canva to kind of, uh, you could create uh, different logos, different designs, banners, okay? So I use some of the, uh, they have a lot of good clip art that's very useful on practicing, right? Just uh, the same way um, basketball players, right? They shoot free throws, three pointers all day. All right, I'm, in, I'm over here just finding complicated, not saying that this one's complicated, but I try to find complicated designs and um, and try to see if I could digitize them. So yeah, these are from uh, Canva clip art. All right, so, um, so when we first approach our design, there's a thousand ways we can approach it, right? So as you can see, we have different layers and it's like, what do we wanna start with first, okay? Like you have the, 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 the combinations are endless of which way to actually go. All right. So eventually you just have to pick something. Okay. And with experience, all right, even me, like I, I even learned to be quicker and quicker. I know digitizers that they don't even have to think twice. They already know the sequence that they're going to go with. All right. But at the same time, uh, we're going to make a decision and we're going to see, uh, we're going to, I'm going to start from the from the bottom and kind of move my way up, okay? So here, I'm just gonna create a, a closed object, all right? And really all you're doing is tracing. So the tracing part, that's the easy part, okay? Uh, if you hold control, all right? This is just with most all graphic design uh, software. Usually when you hold control, it'll keep a perfect zero degrees. All right. So if we're just copying right now, you just have to trace it. If you notice, we have like a little slight curve here. So I'll put a curve here and then I'll strain it up and I'll bring this I'll bring this uh, this box all the way up here. So I'll pass a little bit. The the main part, the hair. All right. And then bring that up and then come back and. Close it up here. All right. And then this is just right uh, without making any adjustments. Sand stitch, we're going to make tatami. Uh, let me select that, make a tatami stitch. 
All right, and then change our angle. So H, we're just changing angles. Okay, a lot of this stuff you could do afterwards. All right, but for right now, all right. So right now, this is our arm right here. I'm just gonna make a tatami stitch. Uh, right now is the green color, right? This is just the default color. But let me kind of make it into a shape. So my design is still here. I just removed uh, the true view. Okay, so you have different views that you could have. If you want to choose the color, um, different software just has uh, like the the pick color uh, feature. All right, so we could pick our color here. Um, it's choosing. Let me see. Oh, okay. I know why. I gotta undim it. Yeah, so it picked that color there for me. So I select back that color, and that was number twelve. All right. All right. Just FYI, if you want to. Sometimes you don't have to have the the perfect color because you're gonna choose the color on your machine anyways. All right. All right. Uh, quick question: uh, Are you using the Hatch software? So this is a uh, this is Wilcom uh, four point five. So it's the same creator as Hatch, but uh, but it's like the next tier. All right. So I started with Hatch when I started digitizing. I, I started with Hatch. Uh, a lot of it. All right. I would say a big chunk of what you need is in Hatch. Uh, a lot of stuff in um, Wilcom is just like extra stuff. All right, so a lot of the keys, hot keys and everything, uh, very similar to Hatch. All right, once we have this guy here, all right, uh, I could just duplicate this, all right? So my hot key for duplicate is Control D. If you see on the right-hand side, you see I now have two objects, all right? So it's one on top of the, the other, and I'm just gonna reflect that, all right? Reflect it here, and then since this is perfectly centered, on the zero axis here, okay, this is my zero axis. If I just take away this negative sign here, so I'm looking at the bottom right, if I take away that negative side, put it position here, all right, so now I just, just like a quick way to, to copy, paste, and since we're using a perfect reflective uh, axis, all right, it just kind of lines up there. All right, so now I'm gonna make this bottom part, this this part uh, of his chest. All right, and I'm just going to see. Bam. I'll just I'll just select a random color. Uh, actually, let me find a light. Oh, there you go, 16. All right, uh, something here. This is where you gotta start thinking what's gonna be on top of each other. All right, is it the arms, the sides that's gonna be on top of the chest or vice versa? All right, so I want to put the arms uh, above the, the the middle part. All right, so if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna have to compensate. All right, I'm gonna have to compensate and go past this stitch here. All right, and I'll tell you why. All right, and then kind of go right here, and then pass up here, uh, go up a little. All right, curve it up a bit. All right, this is going under. This is going under stitches like the, so it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, lined up. All right, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about in a bit. All right, so H, let me get this angle. All right, uh, right now I'm just putting the angles to be straight from each other, running horizontal. All right, and then this is where you're going to start working on your sequence. You want this on top of it, so that's what I meant. Uh, it didn't. It doesn't matter here. Uh, these side st uh, stitches are going below the arm portion. All right. All right. So that's the easy part. All right. That's the easy part. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, good morning, Anja from the Netherlands. All right, and then. Uh, and draw. All right, Lejean, we got uh, still working towards my Brave project. All right, cool. Yeah, T-shirt order with custom logo. I am playing. All right. Yeah. So your your Brave project, whatever is that project that kind of gave you that that boost of energy, like they don't stop coming, right? You always have your first, 
Brave uh, project, but then you'll kind of have some that kind of take take you to the next level. So uh, I always say you're as good as your as your customer makes you. All right, you're gonna have some customers that are gonna kind of push you to the limits of what you can do. All right, so uh, usually uh, knowing when to say yes, knowing when to say no, but when you do say yes to these projects and you complete them, all right, you're 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 always gaining. Uh, boost of confidence. All right, all right. Let's take uh, let's take care of this uh, the main part. So the main fluff. All right. So right here, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce some uh, some tools that I've used. All right. So first first step that I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna outline this whole outside area. All right. So this big fluff right here, I'm gonna outline this. And I'm just gonna find like a perfect corner, right? Because that's like my uh, that's my left switch, right? Here. My left, my left uh, click. All right. So, uh, and then here, those these are all rounded, rounded uh, turns. And then when I pivot, right, that's when I put my left click. All right. Uh, a lot of this tracing is just takes practice. All right. But once you got it, you got it. You're just tracing like nothing. All right, let me see. Yeah, so we're looking good. Uh, I just want to get a silhouette of of the lion. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to use the silhouette and how I'm going to break it up. All right, so. So I'm just kind of like zooming in, zooming out, making sure uh, I see the big picture. Uh, at times, I got to see the big picture. All right. Okay. So um, going into our discussion about being brave. So I said uh, your initial, your initial, it's like a initiation fee to be in embroidery is to get a embroidery machine, right? That's kind of like step number one. Um, since kind of we have all that in common, we kind of, we kind of entered uh, the prerequisite of being an embroiderer. All right, so level one is um, is buying a machine. Okay, now the thing is, uh, when when you're when you're buying a, a an embroider machine, um, like people always say, like do your research, do this, do that. But there's just so much research that you can do, right? It's not like eventually you got to get to a point where you just got to make a decision. Okay, and um, really uh, being brave, I think that that's what being brave is, is being able to make uh, decisions. Um, hold on, what happened here? Okay, there we go. So this is the, so this is his, uh, the outline, okay? This is what's gonna be part of the, the actual lion's mane, all right? Now, what I wanna introduce you to is uh, we're gonna cut, Right, so we're gonna make a hole in between all this fluff, the main portion of the line. Okay, so I have this part on top of it, and now I'm gonna create a hole to go right uh, on top of that. All right, so let me show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna trace this again. All right, I'm gonna trace this again. All right, so like like I was saying is. Uh, the being brave to me, right? Everybody has different uh, uh, different definition of being brave. To me, being brave just means make uh, you're able to make a decision, and whatever decision you go with, like you're gonna ride or die with that with that uh, decision. Okay, so um, I know people have different uh, different definition of brave. Okay. But really, that that's what being brave comes down to is uh, making decisions. And when you buy your machine, that's like your first major decision, right? I won't say that's a make or break decision. Okay, it's not like um, you have to find the perfect machine or you're never gonna make it. Okay, uh, I think there's a lot of good machines. There's no right machine. There's no like this is the machine that will pretty much do everything you want it to do. Okay. Because all machines, no matter what, uh, they all act the same, right? They they all provide the same function. And um, 
I think machines, they're, they're separated by, uh, I think machines, what, what makes embroidery machines different from the other ones, especially the, the expensive ones versus the cheaper ones. Uh, I think it's a matter of how fast can they go and how long can they stay going fast, right? So if, you, if you're doing uh, like commercial work, uh, running them for 16 hours straight with employees, you might need something that could, that could take more of a beating than one that's just going to work for maybe two hours a day. All right. So that's kind of like uh, how I think uh, embroidery machines are kind of categorized when you're, when you're kind of looking for one. All right. All right. So uh, when I'm talking about uh, bravery, that's what I'm talking about, making a decision. Uh, you're always going to see questions, uh, what machine should I buy? Right. Nobody knows what machine you should buy. Okay. Nobody knows what machine, only you know what machine you should buy. All right. Uh, but you can ask. All right. I'm not saying don't ask the question, but uh, it is good to ask people that you trust, uh, people that you feel like, you know, uh, can give you uh, good information because uh, uh, a sales rep is, is, is paid to sell you the, the equipment. So they always say contact the companies, right? I think uh, contact somebody that has equipment, right? So that's like the brave part. Number one is just buying your machine. All right. Um, all right. Let me see. So brave. Uh, the level one of being brave. We all, we all, we all kind of share that one. Okay. So that was like the common one that we all share because we all, we all paid the price to get into embroidery. All right. Some of us are still buying stuff, right? Uh, buying stuff never stops, so the price to get into embroidery never ends. All right. Uh, level number two of being brave in embroidery, okay, is what we're doing right now, right? Is is the learning curve, okay? The learning curve of embroidery, it, it's never ending. Just when you think you got it, it's like, all right, I think I got this. Uh, nobody can tell me nothing, right? I know everything there is to know about embroidery. All right, you get this one project. And throws you out, right? Everything that you thought you knew is kind of out the window, and you got to relearn certain stuff, right? And that and that always happens for me. That always happens if I get a certain different type of garment, right? You're used to doing working on a certain garment, and then all of a sudden somebody wants a different garment, and you're making adjustments, all right? But that's why I think knowing the knowing the fundamentals, right? Knowing the fundamentals of uh embroidery starting with the digitizing kind of helps you uh overcome those certain uh, situations all right so going back here to the digitizing part what i have now i have two i have two shapes on top of each other all right and let me see uh i might as well make this uh this the circular part right the mouth all right so i'm just making shapes right now all right, I'm doing like the easy part right now. Okay, I'm doing the easy part, which is just tracing shapes. And then what we're going to do with these shapes, we're going to cut holes. All right, we're going to cut holes. We're going to let the we're going to let the software uh guide us and help us uh make these perfect cuts. All right, so I'm just making the circle right here. All right. You see? Bam. All right. So I'm just putting them random colors just so we can see the different colors. All right. So I have three shapes. All right. I have three shapes on top of each other. One, two, three. Okay. Um, let me lock these. I, I don't really want to mess with these down here. Um, let me see. Hold on. Uh, yeah, because I already have the overlap. Yeah, they're overlapped already. So what I want to do, I'm just going to, actually, I'm just going to hide these. All right, just so you can see what's going to happen. All right, so I select these three uh, objects. Okay, Each one of them is called an object, as you can see here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this uh, divide. Uh, button right here that we have here and then if you don't have this divide button i'll kind of tell you alternate uh solutions to go about all right 
so I'm gonna what this does, as you can see, let me see if you yeah, you could kind of see down here in the bottom. It's called divide. All right, and then it has a little description. It splits selected objects into separate adjoining objects. So if if you're familiar with uh, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, uh, I don't know about Corel. Uh, I really haven't used Corel Draw, but with Illustrator, you see this a lot. All right, like the Pathfinder tool and stuff like that. It'll it'll kind of cut your your pieces into the shapes that you want it to go. All right, so let's see when we cut it. All right, hold on. Some random stuff happened right here. Let's go rewind that. Okay. Uh, actually, it's not this one. It's the uh, flatten. Nope. Hold on. So why is that happening? Let me select these again. Hold on. It's one of these. Uh, well, nope. That just welded everything together. Uh, and if I combine, combine, no. Yeah, it should be just divide. All right. But let me see what happened. Oh, I know what happened. See? All right. So what's supposed to happen, right? What's supposed to happen. These are just supposed to combine together. Let me just combine two. Let me do them one at a time. So I'll combine these first two. Let me hide this black one. Hide the black one. All right. Combine these two. Put these two together. All right. So what happened here? Okay. So let me let me undo that. I I selected the blue and the, this peach one, and I combined them. Divide. Okay, let me see if it works with flan. Yeah, it worked with flan also. But let me go back and select combine. All right, so what happened here? Uh, let's hide this one. It made a, a hole right here. All right, so it made this hole. So it opened it up. It cut it open. All right, that way we're not we're not stitching. We're not putting unnecessary stitches on top of each other. All right, so I put it, it, it made this hole here and it put this one on top of it. All right, and then if you look down below, there's an overlap. So you see these two lines, these two black lines, those are the overlap. So this is uh, the blue is tucking under the yellow here. Okay, so that's the biggest benefit that you have is that that blue comes right below. So you don't have any gaps, okay? A lot of times when you get gaps in your design, it's because you don't have enough uh, overlap, all right? So as you can see here, the blue is right below this yellow part, all right? It's not like we did it perfectly on the line. We have overlap, all right? So keep that in mind. If you get uh, gaps, right? You always see people with uh, gaps in their design, and it's just they didn't have any overlap or you'll hear it as a pool compensation. All right. All right. Um, now, now we could add this black. So now that we got this, well, let's unhide the mouth portion. Unhide. Uh, unhide here. Okay. So now we're going to select the blue and the black. And then we're going to do the same thing. Okay. We're going to divide. All right. Now, Let's see this by itself. Let's see the blue by itself. Uh, hide others. All right. So now our blue looks like this. All right. If now the we kind of like uh, surgically cut this piece, right? We didn't man we didn't do it manually. So like we don't we don't leave any chance of uh, something not lining up. Okay. So let me see. Uh, let me see how it unhide all. Uh, yeah, we could actually, oh, okay, I see what happened. Let me rewind this back. So if you could, I'm just going to uh, control Z, so undo like four times, all right, because we're going to do this one more again. Actually, redo, control Y. I want to show you something. 
Uh, all right. So back to square one. What I'm going to do, I'm going to first do the black and, uh, and the blue first. All right. So I'm going to do these two first. Mm. All right. So that put that hole here. The blue has a hole. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this black. And the yellow, let me unhide the yellow. Unhide. All right. Gonna have to make some adjustments, hide, hide others. All right, so it has this uh, blue ring up here, but you can always come in, H, and remove all this stuff. All right, so it has like a lot of stuff. It's kind of weird because on uh, my other ones, it, this wasn't showing up. So it's like, sometimes the software reacts a little different. You could delete all this stuff. Uh, let me just select shift. All right, so I'm kind of deleting them the long way. We could just do this all the way up to here. All right. All right, I just took I just took off those unnecessary uh, center ones that were showing up. All right. Let me just delete these nodes. So as you can see, if there's certain things that does, is not adding up, you could just delete these nodes right here. Which I kind of did it the long way. All right. All right. And let's unhide everything. Unhide all. All right. We'll, we'll kind of take it from right here, all right? Just so we don't use up too much time. Um, all right, now let's do these ears right here, okay? So we have these ears in the background. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's just draw these ears. Uh, okay, got a sharp corner there. So you want to uh, left click there, okay? All rounded corners are, are right clicks. All right. And we're going to use the same... Um, the same method to open up these holes. All right, so we have one ear here, let's see. All right, bam, we got one ear there and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to duplicate this, duplicate it, and then we're gonna reflect it. And then we're gonna put a negative sign. All right, so it's right there. Then just confirm that you're good. All right, so the line looks like it's perfect. All right, we're good right there. All right, so I do want to show you something right here. So this is what we're looking like right now. All right, this is what we're looking at right now. All right, um, let me just make sure. Let me run through the questions real quick. Uh, all right. Uh, all right, look like we got a lot of people in the house today. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for stopping by. All right, um, we do have it on the replay, okay? We do have this on the replay, um, just in case, you know, you get busy and you gotta take care of some business, all right? All right, um, what I wanna do, I wanna focus on this, on this main, on the main part, H. Yeah, so right here, build all these holes. I could just put a little dot right here, dot this. Bring it down. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's focus on this guy here. All right. Hide others. All right. This is our central focus right now. The way we have it right now, uh, H, we have it all just running at one angle. Okay. We. But what you can do. you can do you could actually uh angle them so they're all pointing towards the center all right let me tell you what i'm talking about all right so uh stitch angles if you have the ability to add stitch angles okay you could just put 
uh, 90 degrees up here. And then we got a, a zero degree here, zero degree here, 90 degree here. Then we could put some 45s here. Uh, 45s there. Bam. All right, so now, all right, now, this is how, uh, this is how we're looking like now, okay? So as you can see, we're like going towards the center. So if I replay this, actually, hold on, let me take off the underlay. Uh, actually, let me put uh, tatami underlay. All right, uh, replay this, all right. So I did the underlay first, but notice how it's kind of going from like into the center, all right? Just to give it that decorative look, all right? So sometimes uh, a tatami stitch, all right? Usually a tatami stitch is real boring, it's real flat, but if you start adding uh, little details like this, okay? Like it's very noticeable, okay? It's very, it's very subtle, but it makes it makes it stand out. Okay, it makes it makes it stand out a bit. All right. Um, all right, cool, cool. Let's see. Let's unhide all this. Unhide. All right, so slowly we're starting to look like little baby Simba. Okay. So let's just add this. Let's just kind of give it some color so it looks like it. So we'll put that one. This brown one is like this color here. All right, hold on. Uh, this one is this one. All right, so it's slowly looking like it. Okay, uh, just some stuff that I want to talk about. So it's here. Big thing to kind of take away today uh, when you're when you're creating um, overlaps. Okay, the biggest thing you want to look out for uh, is these overlaps. Okay. Um, Stitches on top of stitches. You have to have stitches on top of stitches. Okay. So anytime you have a connection between two different colors, the bottom one, right, has to be very tucked in underneath. So as you see, okay, as you see, this brown, the brown one is tucked in under. Okay. So the brown, the main is the, the outer, the backside of it. Okay. So let me know if that's making sense, all right? So anytime you have two colors connecting together, one of them, one of them has to be tucked in under all around. So if you see what the what the software did for me, it did it perfectly, right? It there's a there's a perfect line around it. So if you see this pink line, that's my brown that's tucked in under. All right. I, I know it's kind of hard to to tell. All right. But this pink line that you see here, that's my brown. That's my brown color right there. All right. So anytime you see uh, anytime, because no matter what, it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to. To see in the software, but you're going to see it right. It even happens to me sometimes. That's why you always have to sample out before doing your main project because these gaps sometimes you need more more overlap than necessary okay all right and then let me see yes okay uh here these eyes eyes this this part is always the simple part like very straightforward satin stitches all right so uh, column a um, pretty much everybody has that stitch the column A stitch, very good for uh, for uh, detailed work. So facial features and stuff like that. All right. Um, so let me just select uh, sand stitch and let's let's do this black so you could kind of see it. All right. Then S. And the cool thing about this, a lot of this stuff is just, um, it's mirrored, okay? So we just have to do one side. We just have to do one side, and we should be able to copy and paste to the other side, 
All right, bam, bam. Okay. Yes. And then, yeah, so let me show you. Copy and paste is like the greatest invention ever made is the copy and paste, right? Starting with uh, just like Word and all that. All right, so we're going to select these two. Select these two. Uh, Control D for duplicate. We're going to reflect. Okay, take out this negative sign. And bam, it's back here. Okay, bam. And we're going to make this nose. Nose, we could just do a uh, regular tatami stitch. Okay, so when I make, when I, when I was talking about earlier about um, being brave is, uh, is all about making decisions even when you're digitizing you got to make quick decisions also okay so for example this nose you got to make a decision do i want this nose to be a tatami stitch or do i want it to be a sand stitch okay and you can think about it for like three hours all right but the thing is you're wasting time so you got to come up with decisions quick so a lot of times, uh, digitizers that they're making that decision for you, right? They're 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 the experienced ones. They they kind of know what usually works best, all right? But that doesn't mean that they're a thousand percent right, or that doesn't mean they're a hundred percent right, because maybe that's the way they see it, right? Um, there's common practices, and then there's like, hey, let's experiment and let's see how this looks like with a uh, sand stitch, all right? So if you kind of know kind of like basics, you can always change stuff around uh, and, and just kind of test stuff, okay? So then we just make this mouth right here. Uh, bam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put up this, uh, I'm gonna put this design up uh, so you could download it right after this today's show. You could download it. I have the final one that I did. I sampled it out. I'll show you the sample that I have. Um, just so you kind of see uh, the whole details of what I did. All right. Because a lot of this stuff, uh, I have to sit back. I have to really think about the sequencing, uh, uh, the steps, right? The steps, the little small details that kind of we forget about when we're kind of doing everything real quick. All right, um, this is actually, let's delete this. Let's do this tongue real quick, right? So these are all just shapes. Like if you know how to trace shapes, pretty much digitizing is uh, pretty straightforward from there on out, okay? Uh, we'll talk about some other stuff that that you got to look out for. But the big one was that overlap. So like the first one that I that we talked about. Okay, so we got the tongue here. Okay, uh, select red. Let's see, bam, red. Okay, and so here, so again, let me show you this example. That's why I think this picture is so good because it's a perfect example of different colors kind of budding to each other. So we have to we have to add compensation. Okay, it's like a word that you're gonna hear forever and ever in embroidery. So if my red is in here, that means my this top part, the brownish part, I have to start somewhere down here, okay? And I need to put overlap. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying overlap, okay? So instead of starting perfectly on that line, I have to kind of be below that line. All right, now I can continue, okay? And we just continue tracing here. And really, once you learn how to, I know it was for me, once I learned how to trace objects, that's when digitizing became fun. All right, that's like the fun part. All right, and then let's select that, put this brown. Okay, so now, right, so now he's starting to look, now he's starting to come together. All right. Uh, here, we're going to do the same thing here. So if you see my angles, it's just going at one angle right now. Okay. 
uh, that's cool, right? That's cool, but it's not exciting, right? I want I want my stitches to look very exciting. So I'm going to add some stitch angles. And let me zoom in so you can see. So I'm going to put my zoom angles to kind of go around this. Uh, it looks like a half moon. All right. So just to give it a little bit of character. All right. Then we put our start stop. Let's start here. Uh, yeah, that's fine right there. Okay. So let me see. Let me see. Uh, all right. And then the only thing we would add is the teeth and this part, right? But what I want to do, see, okay. I want to, I want to show you how I went about. All right. So this is me adding the, the no, uh, the mouth, the teeth. Okay. Uh, one thing that I want to point out, as you can see, this teeth, the original, the original drawing has the teeth very tiny. Okay, this is where you got to make a judgment call again. You got to make a judgment call. You got to make a judgment call. How big do you want this teeth? Because if I were to do it the size that, that it is right now, it'd be very tiny. Okay, so sometimes you got to get out of, you have to get out of the actual drawing and make adjustments to it. Okay, uh, so in this case, the teeth is too small. You wouldn't really notice. Uh, hold on, let me change my camera. My battery died real quick. Um, so we wouldn't have noticed uh, very quick right there. All right, give me one sec. Uh, I think I saw a, a comment or a question about the pool compensation. So I'll, I'll tell you what the pool compensation is. Uh, right now I have it as the standard. The standard will calm and a lot of softwares just put it at 0.17. Okay. But when I um when I did the when I did the the welding, not the welding, the separation of the shapes, it added compensation for me. So I'll show you where it added compensation. And that's the overlap. So compensation, if you didn't overlap. If you didn't add an overlap, uh, your own overlap, then you have to add uh, a compensation to make up for not making that overlap. But since we overlap on purpose, okay, it's less overlap that we got to do. All right, let me see. All right, I think we're back. All right, Let's see if we're good. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go right here. All right, but uh, let me go back to this teeth right here, okay? So uh, in order for my teeth to kind of stand out and be visible, I want to make it a little bigger, all right? So that was, the, that was the point of that one. So you see, if I were to leave it the way it is, it would be hiding back there. And then this mouth, this mouth part, all right, same thing. Like it goes beyond what it really is, right? It's like times five of what it was supposed to be. But I just put it there so it could be so it could be emphasized. Okay. All decisions, right? As as digitizers, okay. Uh, when you send out your when you send out your your designs to a digitizer, your digitizer really doesn't want to experiment, right? He's going to do everything straightforward the way he, he's going to kind of like put his his mind into your into your head. Kind of uh, he's going to think like you do. Right. He's, he wants something very basic. Uh, he doesn't want to really uh, take any unnecessary chances. Right. Because once you're experimenting, then that takes time uh, and you're taking chances. Right. Because the customer might not like whatever you're experimenting on. All right, but if you're running your own, your own, um, if you know some of the basic stuff of digitizing, then you can experiment on stuff. You could, you could receive your, uh, you can receive the design from your digitizer, and then you can make adjustments if necessary. Okay, so um, 
All right. Uh, let's go into some questions real quick. And then I'll, I'll show you the replay. I'll put a replay of the actual design that I have. Okay. Uh, all right. So we got uh, the chat busy today. All right. Bam, bam. All right. Good morning, DJ Old School. First time on here. All right. Welcome. Glad to have you today. All right. Good morning, Margaret. Uh, Margaret. All right. And then Allison, good morning. Brave is kind of like confidence, which I lack. All right. So, yes. All right. That's kind of like what I wanted to touch on today. Right. Uh, confidence. Right. It uh, Being brave. That's what it is. Right. It's, it's having that confidence. And the thing is. Uh, we have to like we we have to. Um, confidence comes with experiments uh, with experience. OK, so. Right when you have, I would say after you have 10 of the same projects under your belt, your confidence level is like sky high, right? Been there, done that, right? So let's say you did 10 hat projects, confidence level high. But what happens is, and I've seen this a lot of times with different people, is if you're changing different niche, if you're changing different garments, if you're that, if you're a shop that says, hey, I accept any type of orders, okay? It's kind of hard to build confidence because you're always changing your specialty every week. But if you specialize in something and you do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, okay, you're going to become a master of that. And that's the best way to build confidence. It's like it's not like anybody could just wake up and have confidence in doing something because there is uh, there is fake confidence, right? Thinking you know how to do it, but then when they put you into a situation, you're kind of like a, a, a fish out of water, like you don't know what to do. Okay, so there is there uh, confidence is kind of you kind of work your way up to confidence. So if if anybody feels like they're not their confidence level isn't there, it's just a matter of repetition, right? It's just a matter of let me do three or four more projects of that same situation. All right, so very good question there. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, good morning, T Town Shirts. Good to have you here. All right. Uh, and then we got good morning, Alifo. All right. Appreciate that. Good vibes. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Barb said, my first big job was embroidering hats and shirts with a logo for a pigeon bird racing team. Second project I did on the multi need. All right, sounds like it was fun. Sounds like you learned something, right? Um, best way to do it, right? And that's what I'm saying. Like your customers are gonna, are you're gonna, you're gonna create that confidence with your customer, especially if you have customers that want some, especially if they're like, if, if what they're requesting is some top of the line stuff, right? It's gonna it's gonna push you to your max, and it's gonna make you better. Okay, so your customers are gonna make you better. All right, uh, bam, bam. All right, uh, Sadar. Good morning from Spring Hill, Tennessee. All right, and then uh, Crafty Puerto Rican. My first big order of twenty-four personalized handkerchiefs. The client sent the product, and the fabric was very thin and struggled with stabilized nightmare, but I survived. Yes. So to me, that is a big headache when customers bring you stuff, right? So for example, that handkerchief, right? I could just imagine that would be a, uh, a nightmare because that's not your standard garment that you have, right? You're going to have to, uh, you might have to experiment on the first three, right? Hopefully you don't, it, it, it doesn't mess up, okay? But yeah. You, you learn easily what you like to do and what you don't like to do by uh, by doing certain projects. All right. Um, all right. Good morning, uh, Z. Just watched Everett's video on resetting your tension. That video was perfect. I'm back in business. Now tension is perfect. Well, almost. Yep. Tension, of course, is your number one uh, skill, right? So we're always talking about skills you got to have in actuality. There's probably like 200 skills you got to know for embroidery, right? We always talk about like the number, the 10, 
uh, skills. You, like it's never ending the skills you have to know for just when you pick up a skill, it's like, well, now you got to learn this. Right. But yeah. Um, uh, eye test and tension. Yeah. You're pretty much, you're pretty much going to blame everybody in the world. Right. But really what it is, is your, it's your tension. All right. Uh, let me go back to the digitizing part. Okay. Um, I want what I want to show you right now. What I want to show you is the replay. Okay, so this is the final one. Let me show you. Uh, I got the final. I got the final stitch out here. Actually, let me go back to this camera. Let's see if I could show you. Oh, it's a little bright right here because I got the big window lit up. All right, I'll try to keep it there for a quick second. But look at how it shines, shining nice and clean. Okay. So you can see zero gaps, okay, zero gaps. Teeth, right, the teeth came out. It looks normal, right? It looks normal even though we, we increased it. Okay, but you see the angles of the main of the face okay let me see uh all right all right so it looks real good let me know what you think uh, i'm gonna put this as a download so right after we're done here all right like i usually do i'm gonna put all this stuff on the on the download so you could check it out you could dissect it you could see the settings all right um you could see any little small detail because I like to do that. I like to uh, look at um, I like to look at um, digitizers work, and I like to see their specific settings. There's some digitizers that they always use certain settings, and I'm always asking why. Like, why are you doing? Why are you using these settings? And usually they have a good reason. Right? They have a good reason why they're doing that, and then start stuff starts making sense. Okay. All right. So let's play, let's push a replay on this. Okay, let me put the, let's push the replay on this. Okay, all right, let's stop right here. Okay, this first stitch, I actually didn't talk about it in the beginning. All right, a lot of this stuff, a lot of, uh, let me see if I could, a lot of, a lot of my uh, adjustments that I do. So I'll be digitizing and then I'll make an adjustment after after I do a, a sample stitch, right? The sample stitch is always like the raw, uh, especially if you're experimenting with stuff, the sample stitch, you're gonna find stuff, right? Either something's out of order, uh, a cut was introduced for no reason, uh, something small, right? So, uh, especially the big ones are gaps, okay? Because I've seen the best of the best digitizers. Uh, they, think they, uh, they think when they're digitizing, they think they compensated enough for a gap and it wasn't enough. You have to go after them. Okay. I've 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 corrected a bunch of expert digitizers on my side, right? It's just little minor tweaks. Okay. So right now, what what's happening right now, it's gonna lay down an underlay just as a whole, right? What the the purpose of putting down this underlay, so let me continue running it. The purpose of running this underlay right now, uh, big reason to flatten out my my garment. All right, I want my garment to kind of fl flatten out, and I want my garment to kind of attach to the uh, to the cutaway down below. Okay, so if we have cutaway down below, I want it to make contact, and that'll and that'll decrease shifting between uh garment and cutaway okay so that way they're kind of locked in all right let's continue so i'm just going from left to right up and down okay um there's a little bit of of science behind this okay uh, i would say for example here i'm trying to go i know i'm gonna have connectors here so i have a like the face uh, with the darker brown, with the ears, okay? I want this part to be secured together, 
Okay, so I kind of focused in this area, combining those. Here, same thing. I have a lot of moving pieces here. So I want to make sure they're all held together. All right. So uh, let me know if that makes sense. And then uh, let me see. Uh, Lejean, stitch out so cute, size 2.5 inch tall. Thank you for all what you do. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, 2.5. I'm telling you, that's my like, that's my sweet spot of embroidery because it fits a left chest logo. It fits a hat. Okay. Um, when I did start, when I started embroidery, okay, I I like to do big, massive jacket backs. Um, but the problem is, right, with big, giant designs that take forever, right, three, four, five hour stitch outs, right. First of all. You got to find customers that want to spend hundreds of dollars for a jacket. Okay. They're out there, right? It is possible, but they're not ordering by the 24 packs, right? They're ordering by the one, two, threes. Okay. Uh, smaller logo types. Okay. Now you're looking into the more bigger quantity. All right. So that was something that I learned very early is uh, there is a special niche, special area for big jacket designs and big designs, but I don't really think there's, um, uh, as far for, for us here at our shop, there's not that much of a profit to be made there because now you got to find a bunch of customers because the quantity is so low. So I, I kind of want to inverse that. I want to find a little bit of customers, but with large uh, amount of quantity, all right? If that kind of makes sense. All right, let's go back here. Um, all right, and then, yeah, so here I'm starting the bottom part first, all right? I'm starting the bottom part, so it's going to do a, uh, it's about to do a tatami stitch on the chest part, all right? It's going to do, so we have an overlap. You can see it's going to overlap a bit, okay? And then it's going to get here to the arms, all right? Just like we kind of... Uh, did it in our uh, digitizing part and then it's going to make a straight line so no cuts it's going to walk its way over to the other side and complete here okay and then here after this one it makes a cut all right it makes a cut and now it's going to do the the main part of the line right here so it's going to make a uh, tatami stitch underlay okay uh everything is is just uh the way the the software, the standard uh, settings. All right. So for uh, for underlay, tatami stitch. I didn't change any of the settings. All right. And then, so here is where you see. All right. Let me speed it up a bit. All right. So as you can see, the angle that I chose to go. All right. So notice it's not like locked in one angle. Okay. I think. Locking in your tatami stitch with one angle um, becomes kind of boring. All right, becomes kind of boring. This kind of gives it uh, more more details. All right, so I am gonna take a picture of this one, the one that I showed you earlier, just so I could zoom in and you could see like the details of it. All right, because I like seeing details in in embroidery. All right, so this is like a small detail. Is the angle that it's coming in as, all right. All right, while this is being played, let me speed it, it's kind of fast right now. Um, just FYI, stitch wise, we, we were at almost 9,000 stitches, all right? So it is uh, pretty stitch heavy for being 2.5, but as you can see how much tatami stitch we have. Then right here, it's just gonna do right on top of it, okay? So same thing, we're going to ride that angle. Okay. And then Anja has a question, where can I find the downloads? I'm going to put the download on the description here. So later today, um, right after we're done here, I'm just going to put the... So every class, if I say there's a download for a certain class, it'll be in that description for that YouTube. All right, appreciate that. Craft Puerto Rican, Lion Digitizing came out amazing. Yeah, it came out nice. All right. All right. Let me go back up. Pretty sure I skipped a lot. Uh, oh, okay. 
Uh, Linda Woods, good morning. Uh, my first job was doing left chest embroidery for the board of directors of a sports referee association. All right, that sounds very exciting, especially if it's your first job, right? It, it becomes intimidating, right? Like it, it's scary, like, hey, this is my first job. This is like my first foot into the door of embroidery. You want everything to be perfect, right? But um, I'm pretty sure after, uh, after uh, different types of similar jobs, right? It, it becomes easier and, and less stressful. All right, let me just, uh, and then uh, good morning, Rakan. Uh, digitizing your university patch, which had a very small lettering in Arabic. Oh yeah, so you it's kind of hard when your first project, I don't know, for some reason, I don't know if, if the world just works like this, but for some reason, when you start, when you open up your embroidery business, it's like the most random, hardest job always comes as your first embroidery job. I don't know why that is. Because I had uh, one of my first jobs as, in embroidery was a diaper bag. All right. And back then, when I first started, I used to say yes to everything. All right. I, 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 I saw it like saying yes. And then figuring it out afterwards. I'll figure it out. Uh, there has to be a way, right? We did a diaper bag. This was before I even uh, had any mighty hoops, right? I tried to do it with the regular hoops, and it it was like the worst three hours trying to hoop a diaper bag, which never happened. All right. Yeah, your first jobs are always crazy. It's crazy how it works. All right. So that was the. Um, the stitch out of this one here. All right. Uh, let me let me answer some questions and then we'll get to the next design. This is gonna be our next one here. All right. Uh, let me see. All right. What I do want to do, what I what I do want to do, is uh, maybe I start recording when I'm just kind of zoned out, not really uh, kind of focused on anything, right, on the side. Is just record myself uh, digitizing, right? Something, some, of course, something cool, and just uh, putting it out like that. Okay, I might start focusing on that because um, here, when I'm when I'm going over the digitizing, and I'm digitizing, I want to explain what I'm doing, right? I don't just want to kind of uh, leave you to the imagination on what what is he doing, right? So I like to explain what I'm doing. So I might do it two ways, all right? So during the embroidery class, kind of explain what I'm doing. And then on other videos, kind of just zone out and kind of just uh, digitize where I'm spaced out, okay? Because when I am digitizing, when I'm kind of like in uh, design mode, okay? I'm kind of like, I, I, I hit the off switch to everything externally, all right? Just kind of FYI, just kind of let you know where my brain's at right now. All right. so. Let's take care of some questions before we we go into our next uh our next one. All right. Um, good morning, Beverly. Don't forget to give the thumbs up. Appreciate that. Yeah. Let's remind uh YouTube that we're in the building. Okay. Um, Alan Can. I just got my Recoma MT201 last week, so I'm still playing around with it. But I did my eye test last night, and it looks textbook. Oh, all right. So you're already good. Yeah, that's always yeah. Uh, your eye test, it, it's like a, uh, it's a moving target also. Like it'll be good one day, and then the next day is it's like the the eye the eye test phantom came by and like resetted everything. It's just the way it works. Or different garments might need uh, cause my my hat my hat tension is way different than my left chest tension. That's why I actually bought two machines because I was tired of making adjustments. I was like, I, I can't can't keep on doing this. Every day we were like uh, kind of constant battle between the tension. All right. But yeah, once you got your tension down, right? Uh, right now it's good. Okay. Just be prepared when it's not good. All right. Just know the the, the, the basic rules about all that. All right. Um, bam, bam. Uh. Janet, my first order was a hooded towel. All right, sounds cool. Sounds fun. Um, 
And then, oh, yeah, this, these, my first job was onesies for newborn babies. I digitized it on a flatbed, and I learned very quickly the difficulty of working on this. Yes. So onesies, right? They're very thin. Uh, so it's like so much stuff that you never thought about when you took. I, I've done onesies, and I, I never thought about uh, upon receiving the order. Or yeah, the the, the order. Uh, I never thought about the stitches, right? The stitches you definitely gotta cover them on the backside with tender touch. Okay, but it's like little small things that you never thought about ever in your life, right? But now, like every time I go to Gap, uh, to buy clothes for my daughters, right? I I don't know for some reason I look in the back and yep, they have their tender touch and everything's there, the way you're supposed to, right? So yeah, we learn a lot by by doing projects. Uh, good morning, Maxine. I gained my confidence after successfully conquering my first large order early, where I had to figure out how to create custom contour knockdown stitches under names on fur fabric. Yep. So that sounds like a combination of things, right? It's like, I'm telling you, it's like you accept that job and all of a sudden you're kind of like learning it as you go, right? So you're going to learn knockdown stitches if you're in the middle of a job. So very good information. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, all right, cool, cool. I'll put the questions on pause for a sec. Let's go here to the digitizing part. All right. All right. Um, so here, okay. So here we have uh, this cool looking uh, lion, right? Just kind of looking at us. All right, and same thing here, all right? Same thing here, a thousand different routes that we could uh, attack this uh, this design, okay? There is, uh, and so in the back of your brain is like, do I wanna, do I wanna go all out and, and digitize this line's face with sand stitches? Do I just want it one hole to Tommy stitch, okay? There's a whole lot of different routes that you could go. So also, if, you, if you're sending your artwork to a, a digitizer, if you just send it to him like that normal, then he's going to use his best judgment, right? He's going to use his most, the safest route to go about taking care of that, okay? But if you have like some creative ideas of like, hey, you know, I would want it to be like this or like that, you could, you could kind of send notes, sketches, or some type of idea to a, a digitizer, if you know the rules, right? If you know the rules of digitizing, because you don't want to you don't want to send certain conditions to a digitizer, and it being unrealistic, because either he's gonna he's gonna try to do what you're what you're talking about, all right, and it's gonna be a disaster, or it might just be a a, a big headache, all right. So it is fun when you know the rules because you could kind of uh, you can voice an opinion and say, hey, can we try this? And you already know it makes sense. Okay. But it's kind of hard to uh, add uh, add conditions or suggestions to a, to a uh, digitizer. And it's something that's not possible. Okay. Hopefully your digitizer knows how to say no. Okay. Because there might be some that they're going to accept that job. And then it's going to be a headache for you when you're trying to stitch it out. All right. So here. This is a badge right here, okay? Um, what we want to do, okay? We want to select, uh, let's just get this outer part, this black part, okay? So this black part, we're just going to trace this outer part, okay? All right. All right, and then going back to, uh, our, our topic for today of being brave. So we talked about uh, level one or the first stage was just your first your first step into embroidery, which everybody bought their machine or planning to buy your machine. And you know you had to have you had to be brave at that point, right? And being brave, like I said, is is all about making decisions. So everybody made their decision and bought the the machine they felt was best for them, right? Um, level two, level two uh, was uh, 
level two, right? Learning curve, right? Learning never stops. And then let's talk about number three, okay? So number three is the actual part, right? So we've we've already shown that we're brave, right? If you're in embroidery, to me, if you tell me you're an embroiderer and you you've have uh, projects under your belt, uh, I automatically, all right, by default, put you in the category of you are brave, okay? Because you made that giant leap. I know it took me, uh, it took guts for us to make that leap, okay, when we did do it. OK, so I put you in that category by default. I already know we're like in the same community of embroiders. You made a decision to buy a machine, no matter what machine you bought, no matter what computer you use, no matter what software you use. OK, you are brave. But now level three OK, of being brave in embroidery is uh, anticipating what's about or anticipating what can happen. OK, so anticipating what can happen. So you're always ready for the most random stuff to happen. And the more the more experience you have in embroidery, the more less stuff surprises you. Right. So there's a lot of things that can surprise you, especially in the last uh, half year, year, last two years, last three years. Right. Like every I feel like every six months, something crazy just gets thrown into the mix, right into the business mix. And it's like we're always reacting, right? The biz, the biggest reaction that I could think of lately was just uh, the blank garment, the uh, uh, the stocks that are available, right? A couple of years from a couple of years ago, stocks it wasn't a thing. Like we were order, we were ordering stocks like nothing, like anything we wanted was literally um, in the in in the tip of our of our of our hand because we were just clicking away ordering stuff right nowadays we have to get very creative we're creating accounts with all sorts of different companies just to kind of maneuver our way around all right so the the level three of being brave okay which all of us kind of share right now is uh anticipating the unexpected okay so uh your vendors right your vendors is going to throw you curveballs from one day to another we have our preferred items that we like to sell that we keep heavy in, 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 in stock from one day to another, it's not available anymore, right? Now, now we have to experiment and start testing other stuff, right? Which costs money. Anytime you're experimenting and testing certain garments, you're 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 spending money, you're spending time, right? Um shipping, right? Shipping is always a unexpected uh stuff that happens because what happens is you send something out, some issue happens. Now you have to stop what you're doing. So you have to stop moving forward, address what's happening. And sometimes it takes hours, can take days, right? And of course, it ends up taking up money, costing money, right? Shipping delays, uh, something delay, right? Or maybe a customer uh, ordered the wrong item, right? Now he's blaming you. Now you have to adjust, all right? So that's what I'm talking about. Being brave in embroidery is being able to anticipate stuff is going to happen right your equipment might go down right are you ready if your equipment goes down uh do you know what to do if something doesn't come out right so that's what i'm talking about we're all brave right we're, we have to be brave we have to stay brave because stuff is going to happen all right um my machine going down that's always been especially in the holiday season when tempo is like at a 100 the biggest fear I always had was my machine going down. Like, what am I going to do? What am I, what would I do? I would have to send out like a bunch of emails, phone calls all day, right? Explaining what happened, right? So my way of anticipating that, right, was actually buying a new machine, right? Because I, I just, I always kind of had it in the back of my mind like that, right? But you kind of got to with everything right with everything with computers going down with anything going down right because i've had my macbook right my macbook which is supposed to be the best of the best computers right i've had my best of the best computer go down all right and it's like you have to be ready to react all right so that would be a level number three of being brave in embroidery is anticipating stuff to happen and just being ready right being ready uh the way you become ready, having your resources, right? Of course, you need manuals on everything you own. You should have a, a location where you have all your manuals. 
and um and you want to have of course they always say right have enough money for a rainy day okay you got to have savings in case stuff happens let's say a, a customer project right gets messed up you got to make sure you have a backup just in case it's something that you did right something on your end where you could go and um cover for whatever expenses happen okay worst case scenario type stuff right so having uh your resources in intact and having financial backup in case anything happens all right just small little details of when we're talking about being brave okay three levels of being brave okay of course there's so many other items that we got to deal with um but to me right to me if you're in this if you're watching us in the live if you're in embroidery, all right, or it, it doesn't just have to be embroidery, but running your small business, running your home business, right? To me, you are in the category of being brave, right? It's just a matter of keep on pushing every day, right? Okay, so that's kind of like my um, my my thought on being brave in embroidery. All right, you have to you have to be brave. All right. Um, let me go back to uh, the digitizing part. All right. Um, so what I've done so far, I made the outline. Okay, I'm gonna use this outline for different for different situations. All right. First, I'm gonna use this outline to make this black. Actually, let me um, duplicate this. One, two, three. All right. So I duplicated this line three times. Uh, first one, I could just make it a tatami stitch here. All right, it's just a cover stitch. All right, hide that. Uh, number two, okay, that could be my sand stitch that goes out. So this white, this white line, this white border that's back here, we could make this sand stitch. So let's just convert that to a sand stitch. Make it white. Make this black. All right, bam, bam. Now we have this other uh stitch here okay so that would be our outer sand stitch so i got this line here let's make this black and what i'm gonna do let me put it like this so you can see what's about to happen i'm gonna ex i'm gonna open it up so this is what's called an offset right i want this actually let me duplicate this so you see what i'm talking about all right so what i want to do you could make it bigger, right? We're gonna make it bigger, but we're gonna hold down control. Hold on. We're gonna hold down control. Or not control. Shift. All right. Notice how when I push down shift, and this is pretty much for most all graphic design uh, softwares, including digitizing software. So notice when I expand it it's opening up from the center out okay so what that helps me i could line it up and it'll perfectly line up with this outside stitch here okay so let me delete let me uh let me bring this one backwards all right now i could put a sand stitch here Bam. all right now we got our outer sand stitch okay and then you could play with these sand stitch. So if I wanted to come in a little bit, I could put a special column offset, uh, bring it in a bit. So let me see, 70, actually the opposite of 70. Uh, offset 30, okay? So it, it'll come in a bit. So if you saw that come in a bit, all right? All right, so I have the base. I have the base of our uh, of our badge right here. Okay. All right. So, quick question right here, um, Linda, what stitch did you use instead of tatami? Okay. So, kind of, I can't remember uh, which part we're talking about, but if you can tell me what uh, what part of the design. Um, all right. Marisa, I'm loving you're watching your digitize. I've always wanted to see it done. You're a great teacher. Thank you for all you do. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, how about pool comes? Uh, okay, yes. Good morning, William. 
All right. Nice to see you. Or, yeah, in the chat. Uh, VL, when overlapping stitches with digitizing holes, be helpful with density. Oh, uh, I don't really think it plays a role. Your density should just be whatever it would have been without the holes. Uh, all right. Good morning, Marlon. Peace, love, and positive, positive energy. Yeah, appreciate that. All right. Uh, all right. Let me go back down. I'm just going to reset these questions. Mm. Yep. Barb, eye test phantom. Yep. I mean, I don't know if y'all have the eye test phantom, but sometimes uh, our, our designs will stitch out perfectly fine one morning throughout the day. And then the next day, uh, everything's out of whack and we have to perform eye tests. Right. All right, let's go back here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one very simple, right? Because I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that cutout uh, that we have here. Um, so I'm just gonna trace this. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I could do a, a, a easier way to cut out our hole. And our hole here is this lines face. Okay. Um, I'm gonna see if I could do it with the most basic. Uh, tools that I have, right? So basic tools that I'm pretty sure everybody has, uh, just to keep it very basic. So right now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy this, the face. Okay. Uh, I have a stitch out of this one also, so I'll show you. I'll show you how it came out. Came out very good too. All right. So I'm gonna kind of quickly do this. Okay. Of course. When you're doing it, you would you would uh, take your time. You could also zoom in to get like perfectly outlined traces. All right. But the biggest thing to know is that whenever you're doing curves, all right, for us, for Wilcom, for Hatch, it's uh, uh, right click for curves, uh, left click for straight lines for pivots so this one right there that was a pivot okay uh, actually what I'm gonna do I'm gonna back this right here I'm gonna I'm just gonna do a full face over here okay I'm gonna include this this little black piece right here. I'll, I'll include that later in the design same thing here you see bam yeah because when I cut these holes, I just want to have a uh, a nice solid hole for my face. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean in a bit. All right, so right now, just making a rough drawing because what I want to show you, I'm gonna make uh, the this uh, gap or not this gap, but this open hole to be our design. All right. All right. Let's see. Bam. So this is our silhouette right here. Okay. It doesn't look like anything right now, but it will in a bit. So turn this into tatami. Turn it into white. All right, now what I want to do, I want to remove all the, the black stitches that, that are right below this, okay? So we could go to add holes. So a lot of uh, different software has add holes, okay? Actually, what you would have, what we should have done, gone here, add holes. Uh, hide others. Well, we're supposed to do. Uh, go to add holes, which right, which most software has. All right, most softwares have add holes. And then uh, I'm just gonna do a quick example. All 
right? You would add your hole like that, okay? You would have to add your hole manually like that, all right? But let me just go ahead, unhide all. Let me gap this here. Bam. Okay, so when I hide this, um, uh, uh, unhide all. Uh, hide this white face. Okay, so I got my gap right here. Okay, so now that white stitches, those white stitches could lay flat right here. Okay, without overlapping, putting unnecessary stitches. All right, all right, cool. Um, unhide, unhide all. Okay, now, okay, just like my, my other one, I got the final one right here. Okay, so it's the same thing. Okay, same thing, what I just did right now. Okay, the only thing I did was add the facial, okay, these these facial uh, details. Instead of just putting a tatami stitch, I, I'm putting a, a sand stitch on top of that. Okay, so it just gives it, it gives it like a, a foundation with the top. Tommy stitch, and then it gives the details, all right? Even with the eyes right here, sand stitch. So the face, the face to Tommy, and then the details of the face, uh, sand stitch, all right? So let me see, bam. And then here, let's look at some details. So I have my black portion here, right? The black. The, the background and then I have the white sand stitch right here. So there is overlap. Uh, there's some stuff that I want to change uh, because my overlap is not is it's pointing at the wrong direction. So it's at negative seven it's at 70, but I want it to be in inwards. so 30. All right bam. Now I have this gap. so if you see here, you see this gap right here? Um, this would show up like times 10 in the actual. So I got to scoot in this uh, this stitch here. So I, different ways I can do it. Okay, so I could do this by holding shift also. It'll bring it in uh, without losing its uh, its ratio. Okay, that's probably the easiest way, the most All right, so now I have that uh, overlap. So it's not enough overlap, let me add more. But what I could do, I could add an offset right here. So I have an offset of 40. Let me put an offset of 25. Bam, now it came in more. All right. I just bring them in a little. All right, let's see a replay of this. And here, it's gonna be the same thing where I put the, the underlay, okay? So see this underlay right here? This first underlay that I start with, that's just to flan out my whole design. Since I have gaps and I have design on top of designs, I don't want anything shifting unnecessarily. All right, so I add this uh, this underlay down below just to keep everything nice and tight. All right, I'm just going from I went from top to from bottom to up, and then I went from left to right. Now it's doing the black uh, fill stitch on the background. Is doing that underlay first, and now it's just doing the, the actual fill stitch from left to right. Okay, so this one here, nothing too fancy. It's just doing regular stitches, okay? And then here, same thing. It's going to do the white part, the white part of the face, okay? It's going to do uh, fill stitch also, okay? So I'm using the same method that I used before where I uh, where I made a hole underneath just so I don't have stitches on top of stitches for no reason okay and uh, setting wise I really kept all the settings the way uh, just the generic the way uh, the software has it so I really didn't change anything uh, same thing with um, pull compensation uh, really didn't change any of the pull compensation here everything was done as I was designing it so the eyes, now it's gonna do the sand stitch here. Okay, it does the first sand stitch. And then I put a double, so as the underlay, you saw I had a double zigzag. That's just to keep this sand stitch nice and straight. Okay, 
and then it's going to continue doing. And then it does the, the details of the face. Okay, so I'm just using regular sand stitches. I just kind of trace the, I trace the, the face. Okay, and then add this last sand stitch to kind of give you the, the final stitch here. All right, so same thing. So it, it, it kind of looks, like I said before, like there's a different ways that we could go. I, I'm keeping it very basic right here. Right, but it's looking sharp. So I do have the stitch out here. Let me show you the stitch out. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see if it. Oh, hold on. Try to give you a good angle. It's kind of bright. All right, so this was a, a sample that I had. There's a couple things that I'm, after I look at it, I could um, I can see that I might want to change a tad bit. Okay, but overall looks very sharp. Okay, came out sharp. I think this picture, right, it looks very intimidating. Like the picture, like the way he he looks, right? He gives like that that. Let me see, right? He has like that crazy look. Right, the eyes. I did try it with uh with red eyes, and it looks even crazier. Uh, I'm gonna put this one also down for free download, so you could uh you could load it up, uh analyze it, check settings and all that, and uh, stitch it out. See how it comes out on your side. Okay. Uh, and I also tried to, I tried these actually a similar design like these. On a polo shirt, so they might be good for polo shirts. I don't know about hat. I really haven't done them on hat, but something flat, they should be safe. All right, all right, um, all right. Let's go into some uh, question time. All right. Uh, so today's topic being brave uh, in embroidery. Okay. So like I said, everybody here that joined us today. I automatically put you down as a brave person because you are in embroidery or you're thinking about doing embroidery or if you're running a business, right? You have to, you have to uh, kind of, for embroidery, you got to pay that, that big price, right? It's like a big ticket price just to come in, just to get started, right? So just off the bat, you're brave. And then continuing everyday situation, right? You're always uh, trying to maneuver your way around with this crazy stuff that's always happening, right? Um, so that's kind of like my two cents on being brave in embroidery, all right? We, 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 it's not only, um, if you feel like, you know, a lot of stuff is happening while you're embroidering, right? Overwhelming with information that you got to know and just everyday business stuff that randomly happens, all right? I just want you to know that you are not alone Okay, we encounter that every day here too. All right, we we encounter like crazy stuff. All right, crazy customers. All right, if you have crazy customers, we have crazy customers just like everybody else has crazy customers. All right, it's just knowing when to say no. Right, uh, when a uh, customer comes in with the biggest craziest project, okay, you gotta like stop them and be like, hold on. You know, I'm not trying to get into that type of situation right now. All right. Um, let me see. Let me fast forward down here. Uh, I know it was kind of hard to answer questions while I was digitizing. Um, but anything that I see here, I'll kind of, if it's digitizing related. Uh, and then uh, Audrey, uh, since the main is a circle, shouldn't they pull be greater on two of the sides since the yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Um, for the push pull, we 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 added the the overlaps. So I called it overlap, but in reality, it is it's kind of like a compensation. All right. And then uh, Siddhar, how do you profit from digitizing since the software like Wilcom is so expensive? Yeah, I mean everything is expensive, right? 
it's like it's like asking how do you profit from embroidery if your machine's so expensive, right? Eventually, right? You 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 do enough orders, um, and then uh, the 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 software, whatever software you have, is just an addition on top of what you pay for your embroidery machine, right? So some people paid. Um, let's say you spend twenty grand on an embroidery machine. And then you spend five grand on a um, on software, but then the 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 expenses don't stop there, right? You still need computers, you need office space, and so it's just a lot of it. You got to see it like a business expense, all right? So there's different ways of making money on the digitizing. You could add it onto, uh, you could charge a separate fee digitizing, or you could include it with your fee with your payment. But yeah, it, I mean, it, the way you, the way you, the way you set up your business, you 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 make your profit according to that. All right, um, let me see. Uh, bam, bam. All right. Uh, good morning, Aqua Bloom Boutique Romero. Do you consider the start and end point? To minimize the jump stitch for single needle user that does not cut jump stitch. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's. I think uh, if you're with a one needle machine, I've never. I kind of like skipped. I went from like zero to fifteen needle. Uh, I do have a one needle that I'm. One day I'm gonna learn how to use it. I haven't had time to learn it, but um, I think with one needle machine, yeah, uh, you don't have the cutter. You gotta cut it your own. Uh, I, I would say uh, digitize. If you do do your digitizing for one needle, uh, you gotta you gotta digitize accordingly, just to minimize whatever uh, jumps and and cuts that you gotta do. Um, yeah, probably different uh, different type of scenario. One needle, uh, of course, you want to have the most minimum color. I I know people that with a one needle machine. They have a ton of colors, and I, I'm pretty sure that would be a headache, right? But you would want to focus on a uh, on a less color, right? Preferably one color design, because there's a lot of logos, business logos that they're only like one or two, three color logo designs. Um, but yeah, anything minimizing jumps, cuts. That's whether one needle, especially one needle, right? If you're one needle, definitely you gotta minimize that. Um, but with a multi needle, yeah, you definitely. That's always on the back of my mind. I've had, I've sent out, I've sent out artwork where I got back uh, my digitizing small regular left chest, and it was like, um, it was like thirty five cuts, and I was like, yeah, that that's not gonna happen, right? That would take forever. All right, uh, what needle, Alan? What needle? What what size needle and thread are you using? Uh, so. I would say 95% of everything I do is uh, 40 weight. Okay, uh, here actually on the on the line, there's one thing that I use uh, 60 uh, for uh, 60 weight needle. I mean, not 60 weight, 60 weight thread with a 65 needle. All right, and let me see if you can tell what it is. All right, so the only thing I use. With a uh, smaller thread and needle is the T. See that T? All right, so the T. But I'm usually uh, flats. I'm using ball points. Hats. I'm using sharps. But uh, with hats, I'm using with hats. Now, now it changes, right? I'm using 7511. Now it's 50 50. Either 7511 or 80 12 needle. Okay. All right. Good question right there. All right, bam, bam. All right, so we got a lot of highs to everybody. Everybody saying hi to each other. All right, so uh, appreciate that. Everybody hanging out. Uh, TR Custom Apparel, good morning. Good to have you. All right. Uh, AT, AT Print, is this designs for cap or flat? Uh, I made it for flat. I haven't. I haven't tried it for a hat. But you never know, right? Uh, I might, I might, I might try it out later today. 
but I would say on a flat, you're you're good for a flat for for polo shirt too. Uh, it has enough uh, pull comp. All right, uh, it has enough pull comp for kind of stretchy type stuff, so you should be good. All right, appreciate that, AT. All right, good morning, Sagoli. All right, looks great. All right, uh, and then uh, question another great stitch out question also two point five. Uh, yeah, let's check, let's check that out. Hold on. Is this bad? Hold on. Let's check out the size. Let's go to, it should be 2.5, but just to be sure. Uh, yeah, 2.48, 2.5. Yep, yep. That's like my, my sweet spot. Yep. So, uh, Barb, red eyes would be fierce. Yep, that looks crazy. I'm going to put it on a polo shirt. All right, Bevy, good morning. Well, I have so much to learn. Uh, yeah, but the thing is uh, with the learning, okay, it's just building on top of each other. All right, so a lot of times we might think like we don't know enough, but we have enough to kind of push us to the next project, and then we're kind of like learning on the way there. So, uh, let me see. Uh, Audrey, all right, looks great. Thank you for the two examples. I love your attention to small details using satin stitches for the face. Features at, yep, yep, yep. So I, I like um, I like flat tatami stitch just to give it a base. But then it's like, uh, I, I, I see it like a pizza, right? So the pizza, you put the, the tomatoes and the cheese as the base topping, right? And then you got to put like, and then the sand stitches to me is like the ingredients. So the pepperoni, the sausage, now that gives it the full actual pizza, right? That's what separates one pizza from another is the small little details of that right there. All right. Uh, Teresa, good morning from San Diego. Another great class. Yeah, good, good. Uh, I like I like today's class too. I like the, the design. This is actually one of my favorite ones, this line. Okay, I might get into making more of these because I think they're real cool. I'm actually going to put this on my daughter's uh, polo shirt later today. All right. And then Sogoli, uh, thank you for encouraging us. Yeah, appreciate that. And then uh, TC, care. thank you for real class information. All right. So today, plan for today. I'm going to, right after we, we wrap it up right here, uh, I'm going to put the two files for download. All right. If I don't do it within a couple hours, just come by tomorrow morning. It should be already good to go. All right. So all, all the, all the, all the downloads, anytime I put a download in a class, I'll always put it in the description of that, whatever topic we're talking about. And then if I ever revisit something, oh, I'll keep on putting downloads to whatever folder that's going to all right and then i'll try to keep the facebook uh updated with any picture so i'm going to take pictures of these if if you go ahead and you download it and you do and you stitch it out or you attempt to uh create your own design i'll put the actual designs too all right uh you can leave it on our facebook so you know we could all share uh see how everybody's stuff comes out all right and then um and then one last note for next week, okay, for next week, I'll be actually working. Next week, I'll be on duty. So I will not be on live, but I do have a video currently in the making that I'm going to premiere next week, Saturday morning. So at 8 o'clock, we're still going to have a video, okay? It's not going to be live, but it's going to be a very good video, all right? So trust me, I'm excited about it because it's going to be some good information in that video. All right. but um. I think we had a good day today. All right. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Uh, thank you for all the questions. Okay. I'm going to go back and reread some of the questions and information. I know there was a lot of good information that, that people were putting out there. All right. I appreciate that. And um, anything, any other questions that you have, just leave them in the comments. Best way to uh, get a question answered, just leave it on a, a whatever uh, video comment. All right. And then I'll, I'll be kind of tracking it down through there. All right. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.